Hi, in this short video, I'm going to show you how to put discs on your E65 BMW. Here's the new disc, there it is. And just to give you an idea, there's the old one. Um, I've already done the other side, so I'm just showing you. You can see it's too thin, how I know. You look at the minimum thickness, this says 28.4, and this is actually 25. This is very thin. This is needed to be replaced quite a long time ago, and this is how you go about this repair. I use this copper compound when I put the uh, disc on. You'll need some glue for the bolt for the caliper. Uh, the caliper happens to be a size 18, a torque wrench if you are not sure on the uh, tension. A hex set if you've got, you need to get the little hex bolt off to release the disc. Uh, just a screwdriver, a cloth. All right, so you're going to loosen the wheel nuts. And you're going to jack the car up. All right, you want to jack it up on this point over here. Make sure you put the trestle under the car. Just take a hose pipe and remove any of the rake dust. You can see it there on the floor. Look at that black dust. Now I'm not changing the pads. Now usually you would change the pads and the disc together. But my pads are fine. It's just the discs are highly worn. So I just need to create some more space here. Remember the new disc is a bit wider. And also I want to put the caliper on quite easily. So I'm just going to separate the pad from the disc. But just be very careful because you don't want to gouge the plastic there. There's a piston there and there's a rubber that uh, seals so the oil doesn't come out. Don't go anywhere near there. So all I'm doing is I'm going where the heat dissipation area is and i'm just uh, wedging a screwdriver and just opening it a little bit now go and open your reservoir because when you depress the piston it's going to push the oil back up and therefore you need to release the pressure by loosening this cap and you don't want to uh, gouge the front of the pad so you can even wrap your screwdriver in a little cloth and just wedge it like that and gently depress the piston in there you go and the piston is moving in Right, you need to release this uh, hex screw here, and sometimes it's stuck. So just be careful, make sure you use the exact right fitting. Very easy to strip this head. So just put that in there, and if you turn this and the disc turns, it's fine. Just get someone to depress the brake, or what you could do is use an impact driver. There you go. And now I'm just going to put that back gently and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to release the brake caliper now this is a size 18 and it is pretty tight and there's another one up at the top right so you can see the bottom bolt is, is basically out I can actually just pull it out and now I'm just going to release this top one uh, you see I've got a container here now that container is going to provide me with a little support when I when I release this caliper right just support the caliper towards the end here as you can see holding it from the bottom there's my hand at the bottom right now there's that container and I'm gonna rest the whole caliper assembly on that container all that's holding this disc is the screw which you've already loosened so I'm taking it out now and you can try and pull this off you might find like this uh, it was quite easy but on many cars you'll find this thing is seized and what you'll need to do is tap it with a mallet so if your disc does not come off uh, wrap your hammer in a cloth or uh, take a mallet and tap 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 turn the disc tap 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 turn the disc tap 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 turn the disc eventually the disc will come free from here and this is a good opportunity to clean inside your threads here where the uh, nuts, where the wheel bolts go in. And what I'm using is just thinners. There's lacquer thinners in here. Right, I'll just clean my wheel bolts and the threads are clean just makes it easier if you ever have a puncture right so here is the new disc now this disc sometimes this have a light layer of oil on them and this disc has been sitting in a warehouse for very long and it's actually got some of the packaging almost almost uh, glued onto it so i'm just cleaning the surface again with some thinners and the other side as well i mean there you can see 
So just give it a wipe. Now, before you put the disc on, it's a good idea to put some anti-seizing compound. This is called copper grease. And I just put it around you. Now, don't let it go in the thread area there. You just want it on the disc face or where it's going to mate you and kind of there. Scrape it out like that. You just need a light layer. And there you see, I'm taking off any excess but where you do need quite a bit here is where the uh, ridges are here. Right, there we go. Now what this does is it stops the disc from seizing onto the hub here because often that's what happens when water gets in here. Now you can take your new disc, make sure it's clean. And because the disc is quite heavy, what I recommend is you take the brake caliper bolt and you get it ready. I'm gonna put that there, but now you'll find that the disc is gonna move. So I'm just gonna put that there and that there just to hold it in place there we go so that makes it easier and now i can put the little hex screw in here all right now you don't have to make that hex screw tight now and you're still going to put loctite on it uh, but now we're going to put the caliper back on and then we'll retighten that you can see there's the copper grease now it's also a good idea to clean these uh, caliper bolts all right so I've just uh, I've just cleaned these a little bit and just dry them and now you're ready to put the caliper back on so you want to grab the caliper now make sure you haven't twisted it around you see this hose here this hose must not be twisted because I depressed the piston earlier you can see how easy it is to get it on now you can just put your caliper bolts in here Right, now it doesn't matter which bolt you start with, uh, as long as you support the caliper. Now I like to start at the bottom because then you can see the top here is still holding the caliper assembly. And you want to put your nut lock on. Now this is Prattly one, you can use Loctite, there's lots of different brands but make sure it's the blue one. Blue lid or blue head. Right, so just a few drops there. Alright, so make the bottom one quite tight. Now, why I do that is it stops the caliper from just falling out. I put the nut lock on the top one. Alright, these caliper bolts are pretty tight and the torque setting for this E65 I think is about 110 150 Newton meters somewhere there basically it's a little bit uh, less tight than the wheel bolts so here we go I've set this to 110 okay now this one you also just want to retighten and this mustn't be made very tight, but it will also need the, uh, the glue, the lock tight, or the uh, nut lock, whatever you want to call it. Okay, here you just need a tiny bit, just one drop. This doesn't have to be very tight. Remember, you've got the glue on the nut, the blue one, so just a little bit tight. Um, it's very hard to open this when it's been over tightened. Sometimes people strip this head. Right, and if there's a wheel spacer, just put it back on and just make sure you've cleaned both sides. You don't want anything between the spacer and the disc. Now, if your car doesn't have the spacer, it's fine. Just put your wheel back on now. Right, once while the car's jacked up, just uh, right quickly, right, while the car's jacked up, it's also a good idea to just listen for any bearing wear. So all I'm doing is I'm spinning the wheel and I'm listening. And I don't hear anything any grinding or wearing so i can say the bearing sounds fine now it's also a good idea to inspect your tire and your mag to see they are straight and not dented so i just put my finger here and i'm just checking it's a mild kink but not enough to get the mag straightened uh, this mag is still fine 
Now, once you've replaced the disc, you might find that the brake is a bit spongy. You might find that the grip isn't quite there. That is normal for the first 50 to 100 kilometers. Don't be heavy on your brakes. Don't depress the brake pedal uh, very firmly. Let it wear in gently. Remember that the brake pad has to take the shape of the new disc. Remember the old pad had a little bit of uh, crevices and it was probably uh, not completely straight or not completely flat on the face. So now you want to get the pads and the disc to mate nicely and that takes about 100 kilometers of driving. So take it easy on the brakes and the grip, the braking uh, grip will eventually return. Thanks for watching. Cheers.